Hi everyone, today we will be talking about the CSS calc function. The CSS calc function is a very interesting function of the CSS because it enables us to perform some basic mathematical calculation all within our CSS styles. And you might be wondering what kind of calculation do we want to perform within our CSS class. So just stay tuned because I'll be showing some of them. So let's move over to our um, computer. Over here, you can see that I have two basic files. I have a basic HTML file, and I also have a basic um, styles.css file. So we will just be taking a look at this file and what it does. Right now, we have the output of this file over here. And here we have um, our navbar. Let's just call this our header with a little bit of navbar here with our logo, which I, which I just represent with um, a text. And here we have some text. Here we have a div shaped as a square, and here we have some other random text over here. So we would be making use of this particular um, of this particular design to explain some to explain a little bit of CSS calc function. So let's go ahead. So over here first we have um, we would like a situation whereby, as you can see, we have um, our scroller over here and we want to perform a situation whereby when we scroll up and down we want our navbar to remain static while the remaining part of our body scrolls and i'm very sure that there is a million and one way to do this right so many ways to do this we can decide to give the header a fix you might have even so many approach to solving this problem but i'm talking today how to solve this problem using the css calc function so now let's all head over to our css file so here we have our header and we have um, this predefined class which I have already written to form this particular styling. And here we have in our HTML over here, we have the main. And for our main class here, we have um, this predefined style for our main for our main class. And we're just going to make it some little a little bit of tweaking to this particular style, and we'll be adding calc to just to implement that particular feature. So let's go ahead. I'm going to say height. I'll be giving our main selector a height of, then I'm going to say calc. Now the calc written here with the open and close of the bracket simply means that we have kind of initialized the calc function. And what we need to do here, do next within the calc function is to write in the expression that we want the calc to calculate. So this is actually becoming interesting. And at this point, I can say that I want the height of the main. This is actually the main from the whole white part of this particular page is actually the main. So I'm going to say that I want the main to be 100 view height. So 100 view height is actually the viewport of our entire window. So I'm saying it should be equal to the viewport of our entire window minus the height of this particular header because the viewport of our entire window starts from here to here so if i should minus the height of this particular header we would be left with here and here and here we will be left from here to here so let's just see what the height of our header is so we can see in our header we actually defined our header to be of height 80 pixels so in this case i'm going to say that it should be minus 80 pixels and if I should save this now, come over here, refresh this particular page, we can see that this is not taking effect. And that is because of now we've not actually set our overflow value. So if I should come over here and I say overflow of Y should be auto, um, should be auto over here and I save this, come over here and refresh again. Now we can see that our header is taking 100%, like completely 100% without an obstruction of the scroller. Why we have this particular, um, the particular main area being scrollable without affecting the header. So we just say that, okay, give us, um, just give us a work area of 100 view height minus whatsoever height that this particular, um, that this particular head is. So that's just how to go about it, and it's very simple. So this is just one of the use cases of calc, and there are so many use cases of this, there are, like, there are so many of them, 
like you can also come up with your own use case for this as well but let's take a look at another use case of, of cloud aside from making um, a sticky or a sticky header so we can just come over here and at this point we want to play around with the um, square shape that we have over here so the square shape is actually having the class of box over here like you can see we have this as 300 pixels and over here another 300 pixels we just give it a background color of brown and just some basic styling over there so what exactly do we want to do we want to see how we can use our css calc function to position this particular box at the center of the page yes i am aware that if we should just do margin of auto it's going to fix that for us and if we should come over here we can see that our box is actually at the center but there are different ways whereby we can do this and one of the ways is also to use the css calc function however there are some things that we cannot really accomplish with just a margin of auto let's take for instance that we want our box to just appear somewhere around here close to the right hand side but not really to the extreme right but we just need it to like the, this particular part should be somewhere here so there's no way we can use the um there's no way we can use margin of auto to fix that and it's not sort of going to work if we should use a margin right and let's try that to see so if we should say a margin right of let's say um let's say 50, 50 pixels for instance and we we'll save this you can see that this is actually lots of a reflection because it's always going to take preference with our margin left first of all and it's actually obeying it but our web page is actually flowing from left to right so we wouldn't really see the effect of this however if we should say we're going to give this a margin left let's say we give this a margin left of, um, of 600 pixel and we would see that it's moving over there but the problem with this is that we can't always tell what the size of our screen could be if for instance the size of our screen goes um, like if the size of our screen should be less than 600 pixels then this wouldn't really work in this case it simply means that the box would move out of the viewport of this particular um, web page so how do we solve this using um, calculate using the CSS calc function so in this case we are simply going to say margin left again we can say the margin left should be a calculated function um, that's a small letter we're going to say calc and in this case we're going to say 100% now what this simply means is that it should go 100% to the left and if I should go this way now you can see that it's taking us 100% and the reason why we are still seeing a little bit of the box over here is because of we have a general pattern um, around our body not our body around our, our main we have a general pattern of 20 pixels and that's why we can still see some parts of the box over here else okay I, I think I'm just going to comment this out so we have a clear picture of what we're talking about great so we can see right now that we have that totally out of it so what we're going to do next is that now that it's out we are going to subtract the length of oh, sorry we're going to uh, subtract the length of the box away from the hundred percent and let's just watch what let's just watch what happened so we'll say this minus 300 pixels which is actually the width of the box so I'm going to save this now refresh this and we can see that our box is back but this is not what we're trying to accomplish we're trying to we just want this box to be somewhere here let's say 50 pixels away from the margin right so in this case I'm just going to add 50 to 300 make it 350 so if I should refresh this now we can see that we just have our box like 50 50 pixels away from the margin right so this is just another use case of um, of the calc function and like I said there is a whole lot we can do with the CSS calc function so over here you can see that even if we should resize our screen that's always remain 50 pixels to the right it's always remain 50 pixels to the right so great now another stuff that we can actually use the CXS calc function for is 
actually for styling a font. So have you ever gotten to a situation whereby you, you actually want your font to be big, but while at the same time, when it's big on a desktop device, trying to view it on a mobile device, it's just, it's just everywhere around the screen. Like it becomes too big and you start using some sort of media query to query your font size to make it um, mobile responsive. Over here, we can come to the P element, which is actually the selector for all the text that we have over here. So in that case, we can say font size, the font size and um, first I can basically just say the font size is 50 pixels which is like a normal font size and we'll refresh this we have this now you have to take note of this if I should um, make this particular stuff move it here and there you can see that it is usually constant so let me just um, do this for easy responsiveness so you can see that the font size remains constant in respective of the screen size. So that's just basically how the default um, font styling uh, font size works. But if we should introduce the CSS calc function to this, so we say calc and now I can just give it a kind of a base font or something. In this case, I'm just going to say 10 pixels. So I will say 10 pixels plus Let me just take a random number, and in this case, I'll say um, 30. Oh, I think that'll be too much, so I'll just say 5 view width. So 5 view width simply means 10 pixel plus the actual value of 5 of the view width, that is the horizontal viewport of the of the device, of the web browser, of the browser window. So in this case now, I will come over here I'm going to refresh this and watch what happens. So you can see that when I reduce my screen size, the font becomes smaller. And when I increase this, the font becomes bigger. Reduce it again, it becomes smaller. Increase it, it becomes bigger. And just in case that's not obvious enough, I'm just going to make this to become 10, just to make this very, very obvious. So now you can see how this is big. But, oh, okay, I didn't select that. So, but when this device becomes small, when the viewport becomes small, the text also becomes smaller. So that's just how to use um, the calc function in making a particular font size responsive. And of course, we, we can use any value over here. Like you can see that we use um, the negative value and here we use the positive value. So let's try another value. So first of all, let me change this. Let me change this to just, um, let's say, let's say for view width and let's just see how this goes first. And I can come over here. So this is the behavior for view width. I can just say that the result of all this, the result of all this times times two. And I'm going to save that now, refresh this page. Now, can you see it's just times two? So now it's making the um, expression of, it's calculating the expression of 10 pixel plus four view width. Whatsoever that answer is, it just multiply it by, by two. And we can still say multiply it by 10. And when we increase, when we refresh this, this will definitely increase. So we can still use the, um, multiplication operation for this as well. So aside from the multiplication operation, there are more things that we can still do. And that is more like using, I'm going to say plus, and this is more like using the calc function within a calc function. And we can just call this a next calc function. So in this case, I can say calc again, and I can just say calc um, to em plus Let's say, or let me just use minus this time around because it's becoming too big. Or rather, I could say 2am two, um, two minus, uh, minus what? Let's just say 100 pixels, for instance. So this will just become a little bit smaller. And when we refresh this, we can see the actual value of that. So if I should say minus 2 pixels and save this, and refresh this, we can see the, uh, the value of that particular expression. So let's just recap um, a little bit on this. What exactly is going on here? So first off, 
we have this innermost calc function. So CS is going to calculate this expression first. And whatsoever the result of this expression is, it's going to also calculate this one in the bracket next. So it's going to say what the result of this is, it's going to multiply it by 2. And whatsoever the result of this, it's going to add it up with the result of this particular inner calc function. And this can go as far as whatsoever because I can add more calc function inside of this calc function again and just keep on having more next to the calc function. But I don't really think that there will be so much need to be having so many next to the calc function. But I'm just stating that just in case we have a need for this, that option is definitely available. So that is just it. So I'm just going to leave this to be uh, more like the basic fonts we have there before. So I'm just going to undo all of this. So let's say I undo all this, save it up, and let's refresh this page and we have this one over here. So when next you write in your CSS code, remember there's a calc function to help make your CSS easier. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you all in the next video.